a covert or an overt narcissist. I'm Elizabeth Shaw and this channel is all about the narcissistic personality disorder to give you more understanding of the people you might have been or are dealing with within your life, ways to handle those people if you can't go no contact and how to recover from narcissistic abuse. This video is about the difference between a covert and an overt narcissist. The narcissistic personality disorder is a disorder and can only officially be diagnosed by a professional. Those who have the disorder are difficult to spot in society and they are difficult to spot by psychologists as they can manipulate the best of psychologists. Some have even dated them. Personally, if you're a survivor of abuse, physical, psychological or both, whatever they are, you have every right to judge someone you know as toxic. If they lack empathy, if they exploit others, if they're self-entitled, if they harm others without remorse, you don't need a professional diagnosis. Learning about the disorder often gives us survivors the answers we never got from our abusers. It provides us clarity and closure as we can just not understand how or why someone could be so cruel to another person. Why we didn't see it or why it took us so long to leave. Why we accepted their treatment of us as normal when it was far from normal. To have the disorder, they would need at least five of the nine characteristics. I will add the video for that in the description. However, someone with four can be equally as toxic to be around and those on the disorder are individuals. It is on a spectrum. Experts, psychologists and survivors have discovered three main types and four subtypes with more and more being words used being, being used for these. So the main types are the malignant, the grandiose and the vulnerable. And the subtypes are the cerebral, the somatic, the overt and the covert. And we are now hearing words like communal, neglectful, benign, stubborn, entitled, status, control freak. And there is even the narcissist that seemingly seem to be all of the above. If their main character trait is requires excessive attention, if they have actually achieved, usually through exploiting others, power and success, um, you could be dealing with a classic grandiose, especially if they are big on their looks. And if they also are big on sexual conquest, you could be dealing with a somatic grandiose narcissist. If they have homes, cars and a following to match, you could be dealing with a very arrogant, over grandiose somatic narcissist as they can afford to be outrageous with their arrogant behaviour as they have people around them to support their alter ego. If their main character trait is requires excessive attention, but they have an extremely high IQ and they never really bothered or understood physical appearance, they could use their mind more to manipulate those around them. And you could be dealing with a cerebral grandiose or a cerebral vulnerable, or you could be dealing with the um, malignant as they have the intellect to manipulate people and find alternative ways of forging friendships. If they are shy and haven't achieved much in life, the vulnerable covert narcissist. They can and they do cross over. An overt narcissist, overt meaning done or shown openly, can and will act in covert ways. A covert meaning not open, acknowledgeable or displayed, all narcissists will act covertly at some point or another to manipulate those around them as narcissistic people lie and lie and they lie to cover up their lies. Them not telling you something is just the same as lying and they don't lie to protect your feelings, they lie to save themselves.
A covert and an overt can cross over in personality types, although they will lean towards one more. Overt or covert are both narcissistic um, and both manipulate for their own goals. If someone lacks empathy, if they continue to break promises and let you down, if they seem extraordinarily jealous and envious to the point they destroy others, whoever they are, you need to find a safe way to get out and stay out. Putting a name to what they do helps us. Also, hearing about one type and that not matching what you were dealing with can be confusing, especially at the start when you're trying to lose the brain fog and get um, clarity as to what you've been through. Learning about the types helps. However, abuse is abuse and there is no excuse. Yes, they know their behaviour is wrong. Otherwise, why would they act in hurtful ways in private and not with everybody around them? Why would they try to hide it with endless mind games to control others? Why do they gaslight to confuse those around them? And why would they lie to cover up their toxic behaviour? The narcissist personality disorder is on a spectrum. We can all actually have a trait or two of narcissism, meaning someone can be confident and achieve success in life, yet they have not destroyed others to get there. They care for others and they are not a narcissist. Some people can have quite a few traits, but it doesn't make them a narcissist. Sometimes if they are negative, they can be a toxic person or a fool, just a twit. Um, you can have people with things like BPD that isn't a narcissist or someone who suffered from past trauma. Most people have suffered from some form of trauma within their life, whatever that trauma was to them, a traumatic experience in their lives. But not all that have then go around destroying others. Many heal and reach back to help others or during their healing journey, reach back to help others through as they understand how it feels and what people have been through. And unfortunately, some try to help narcissistic people to their own detriment. It's that saying, I was that busy helping you, I didn't see you were destroying me. So the covert narcissist, coverts can seem okay, some can seem well-mannered, some polite. So then as time goes by, something just does not seem right about them, but you just can't seem to put your finger on it. You can't seem to communicate with them. They are not loud and in charge like you might think someone with the personality disorder would be. In the beginning, they don't tend to be that argumentative, but over time you notice they seem to have a sense of entitlement and superiority, just not as in your face as you would expect a narcissist to be. They feel like they are... Well, you feel like you can approach them to have a conversation with them um, after the idolization stage, but at the same time, not overly sure on how they may react as they often go into the passive aggressive sulks and you don't want to upset them. The more you get to know them, you notice they hate feeling vulnerable. They hate any weakness being known to others. And as you get to know more about them, when you see um humanity or flaws in them which we are all human we all have flaws um but a covert narcissist will often go on the attack and blame and shame those around them for any mistakes they make and we do all make mistakes it's how we learn it's it's a part of life but they they can't seem to handle it and they can't seem to accept it. They have to blame other people for it. They shut down and withdraw. You'll suddenly get the silent treatment out of nowhere, often leaving you wondering what on earth has just happened. There's a lack of empathy with them. They come across as cold and not interested in you. They just don't seem to care then they can come back with the play nice and idolise you again to keep you in that confused state. They 
seem almost smug. It's their way or no way, as with most narcissistic people. They come across as very misunderstood people. Um, Some can actually go around talking about how they know what other people think and feel and they... And other people just don't understand how they personally think and feel. And although we can't 100% know how someone else thinks and feels, we can relate to how someone will feel, especially if we've been through a similar situation. Um, And we can strike up a two-way conversation to validate their feelings, to validate our feelings, to communicate about past experiences that we've been through and to gain that mutual understanding of each other. A vulnerable vulnerable narcissist will um, always turn the conversation about them. They will always have suffered worse than you. They'll not be interested in listening to you they'll only be interested in themselves and at the same time as much as it's good to talk about these things we don't want to continue constantly staying in that woe is me mindset because that can negatively impact our lives also they use lots of passive aggressive behavior you'll again get the sulking the silent treatments cutting you off mid-sentence making promises and failing to deliver often walking on eggshells around them so that you don't upset them whereas with a over you're often walking around on eggshells so that they don't attack you physical or um psychological Everyone who manipulates tries to do it in an underhand way. So overt narcissists are as equally under the radar. Coverts are often the shy narcissist. They have a they show more self doubt and they they have that lack of confidence. The covert narcissist can come across as empty, shy, low energy, depressed. And you might have people around you saying they're not quite right, something's um, not all there with them. They can have grandiosity on the inside, but they feel ashamed about it. If they get stressed, they might even show some signs of anxiety. And there is a big difference. I'll add the video. There's a difference between... um, a vulnerable narcissist, uh, BPD and CPTSD. The covert will be very vulnerable in front of you, um, using that method to gain sympathy, to gain attention. They will want you to feel sorry for them. They might look very dramatic when they're looking for that sympathy. They believe they have the right to everything. They are self-entitled. They do believe they are special. They have a like in empathy. They think they're better than those around them. Yet at the same time, they believe they're not good enough. They are very arrogant and will not apologise, often only if it's twisted around onto being your fault. They are people who try to come across as perfect, who are very hypocritical as they try to come across morally superior, but they often have done or will do the things they're um, talking about that other people have done that they don't agree with. Coverts will guilt trip others as much as they can. Things like, please, can you lend me some money? I haven't got any money, but I really, really need to get this. They might not directly ask if they're ill they'll want a hell of a lot of sympathy from you often making those around them feel guilty to to get that once we feel guilty we then start looking after them more because we feel bad if we don't they will always play the victim if there's evidence they will twist so that they are the victim they pass all their insecurities onto their main partners Coverts are the ones who will say things like, are you really going to wear that? Or I wouldn't bother doing that if I was you. They rarely directly invalidate you and most narcissists invalidate in an underhand way. Whereas the the overt narcissist, 
the overt narcissist will come straight out and say, you look fat in that, you look too thin in that, don't wear that, it doesn't look good on you. They will they will do it directly. The coverts does it to make you think and confuse you more. The overt does it, which say makes you think, but you know what they've said, they've, they've hit you directly with the words. Overt narcissism, these are usually the grandiose narcissists, but not always. They are arrogant, they are expert expeditionists, can't pronounce that word, they are boastful, they are easily offended to criticism and their anger and their rage is very close to the surface. Um, They are demanding of specialised treatment. They want to be and will often be known as the best at everything. They really need to be recognised for their uniqueness, believing they are superior to others. And they often agree with themselves. Their personality is very exploitative and very ruthless in gaining power and control. They have the potential to be a public figure and often but not always have the power and the money to match their grandiose ways. Um, Not always, there is plenty that don't have that to back up who they think they are. Um, and when they do, it's always at the expense of others. They've not worked hard to achieve. There is plenty of people that have worked really, really hard to achieve where they've got and are very protective because they have worked hard. Then there is narcissistic people who have exploited others, demeaned others, controlled others to get where they are. Um, a lot will not secure success and will simply make up great stories and lie or exaggerate about their achievements in order to gain the recognition that has never been earned but they believe they deserve. Overt and covert narcissists have deep feelings of unworthiness. The overt narcissist will diminish slander and intimidate people just because of their own jealousy and insecurities they have very high levels of distrust distrust believing um that they can't trust people basically because of how untrustworthy they are overts often believe themselves to be better than others and they usually have an army of fly monkeys and enablers who agree with them so they are more outrageous and they are more obvious in their ways both overt and covert lack a conscious they lack that empathy and they will project their own fears insecurities and quite frankly damaged inner selves on others by lying, manipulating, withholding or abandoning. In fact, whatever tactic they can master to get any sort of attention or reaction from those around them. Overts can cheat, but often they have enough people around them sucked into their lies or enough people reliant upon them through that love or through fear. Um, Because they have that many people around them making them feel special on a more continuous basis. So over it's a less in need to cheat, shall we say. However, they are human, so they are just as capable of cheating um, as the covert and just as capable of cheating as people who are not on the disorder. People who do not have the disorder can cheat on their partners. With a covert and an overt narcissist, both are capable of staying faithful. Although this is rare, it happens. So if you've been with someone who has stayed faithful, um, just if they've got five of the characteristics, if they are toxic, just because they've stayed faithful does not mean that they are an okay person. If they, if you feel bad around them, if they bring you down, just because they've stayed f- faithful does not mean they're the kind of person you want to be around. Overts are extremely self-centered and extremely stubborn. Overts are the more obvious narcissist. Um, it's Most often they have 
no self-awareness. They are oblivious to how they act, to the impact they have on the people around them. They just rule people through love or through fear. So people don't stand up to them and people defend them. When when someone does stand up to them, they will have an army of fly monkeys, an army of enablers to defend them um, and to stand up for them. They can come across as very confident and very fun to be around. This is often mistaking their arrogance and um, dominance as confidence. Narcissistic people are very rarely humble. Over-narcissistic people are very rarely humble. They will brag, brag and they will boast. They will still play the victim when needed. They are extremely manipulative of those around them and they will tell countless lies. They ex- still exaggerate their achievements. If they've achieved or not, they will still exaggerate them. They will manipulate anything, everything and everyone. They feel superior. They feel above and they feel better than others. They have that sense of entitlement. They have a very inflated ego. They dominate and they exploit, lying and cheating their way to the top. They see others as basically an extension of themselves to be used to gain what they want and then devalue, discard, hoover if they need them again. They are extremely dominant and very charming, which draws people into them. They easily seduce and when their needs are no longer being met, they they do move quickly onto that devaluation and discard phase. When their attempts to exploit others aren't successful or their demands and self-entitlement are not being met, they have anger and rage. They will destroy others that don't conform to their demands. They can actually be prone to boredom. They are very egotistical and extremely jealous of others. Over narcissist is that very grandiose, very in your face and very assertive. They are big risk takers they not all of them most of them are big risk takers and they can be very impulsive but some will not take that risk because it might ruin their facard if that's the right word um they will exaggerate their achievements the first sign that something is wrong with someone else is as soon as you start googling someone else's behavior when there is something you don't like about how the ways in which someone else is treating you or how they treat those that they claim to love or how you feel around them and you start looking for information as to what is happening that is the first clue that something is wrong um, most often to many people or googling what's happened in the past or you find you've turned yourself into a detective not only still in the relationship but if you've got out of the relationship trying to work out what on earth has happened the best thing to look out for is do they seem entitled even if they don't always act like it do they exploit others do they lack in empathy do they put other people down do they seem jealous of other people do they feel like they're um well sorry no do you feel like you're um do you feel like you're losing or lost who you are do they seem to put you down do you feel uncomfortable around them um do things just not add up around them? Is your anxiety levels rising? Do you start with things like, this might sound stupid. Um, if only I hadn't, when you're trying to explain things to other people, even if you're not dealing with someone on the disorder, you're dealing with a very toxic person and you have to decide for yourself to find a safe way to step away. Rule one, if you have doubt, there probably is no doubt and they are a narcissist or at the very least a toxic person. If you are doubting um, because you've reacted at times, um, because you've heard people say it takes two to tango, um, 
No, because you have empathy. You loved hard and you hurt hard. Reactive abuse is not the same. When people provoke, even the best of people have a limit. And narcissistic people know exactly which buttons to push just enough to get a reaction so that they can twist all the blame onto you where they will then downplay or outright deny all their behavior and exaggerate all of yours to make you feel that guilt to make you conform to their demands. No one deserves to be manipulated, abused or hurt. You're a good caring person who likes to look for the good in others and there is no wrong with that. It's just learning behavior you will and will not accept from others from now on, learning your boundaries um, so that you no longer allow people into your lives that don't deserve to be in your life. It's not that you're not worthy of them, it's that they are not worthy of you. So some ways to recover. Um, we often can question ourselves of, but they can be so nice. And those on the cluster B personality disorder, the borderlines, the narcissists, the histrionics, they have a disorder. That is who they are. They are not healthy people who switch it on when they feel criticism, anger or stress. This is who they are. What they actually do is switch it off when they see there might be a consequence or it might negatively impact their life in some way. They can switch it off, but it's who they are. So it's always there laying dormant in the background. Coming out of any form of relationship with a narcissist often leaves us in a state of disbelief, confusion, um, usually because of our own perceptions, values, beliefs, kindness and trust in others, making allowances for other people's mistakes with the help of their gaslighting, blame shifting and their silent treatments and projecting their faults onto us. We then rationalize, we make excuses, we blame ourselves and give them benefit of the doubt over and over again or through fear of reactions, fear that no one will understand, help or believe us. And if you've been isolated, fear of being alone can also keep us trapped in, trapped in the cycle of abuse. Also, they give us the hope, they give us through that future faking, they give us the hope of something that what it could be like and we have to we have to let go of that belief that it could have been different when we finally awaken from the trance that they put us under and finally break free for good it can seem like never ending mountain to climb and we are drained emotionally physically and financially often with the narcissist still playing their hideous games through all their smear campaigns here are some top tips for practicing daily, even when you feel like you take a step or two back, get up and go again. We go to rest so that we we go to rest so that we can recharge our batteries, go to sleep so that we can recharge our batteries. And it can be difficult finding our sleep patterns again, but you can and you will do it. One, be patient and be kind to yourself. It takes time, work and effort from within yourself. If you've slipped up and reacted to them, if you've had a knockback or if it's just a bad day, these things happen. Deal with your emotions and then move on from that moment as it's now in your past. If it's in the beginning, just get up day by day and go again and again and again and keep working on you. You will get there. To create new routines for you. Sometimes we miss the routine that we had. Starting new ones for yourself. Realising you no longer have to answer to someone else. You now only have to answer to yourself and what feels right for you. Three, release the toxic, toxic words out of your mind. Learn to detach your thoughts. And when we've been around these people, they poison our minds. Then our subconscious starts to work against us. Um, get help from support groups. Get that validation, that clarity. Find and connect with others who've been there. Reach out to best friends and family. Um, and even if you've been cut off from them, 
there's still breach back out you never know just know your boundaries and your standards to know whether you need to stay cut off from them or whether they are genuinely good people that were trying to help you um journaling uh talking to a trusted friend support groups coaches psychologists emdr treatment um whatever finding what works for you then um better help better help is a brilliant support network i shall add the link to those in the description but it's finding what works for you what you feel comfortable with and working on building on your mind how you want to think now look for the positives no matter how big or how small and keep going keep achieving more looking for the things that you do have in your life to be grateful for and building on those things four accept and acknowledge the truth and then forgive yourself you have to realize you were manipulated and duped by an extremely toxic person who just wanted to use you for your good qualities they do not care for you they just want to hurt you your forgiving kind and generous traits were used against you being a good person is nothing to be ashamed of learning to say no will become a deal breaker with these kinds of people in your future five set those boundaries and learn to say no um stop all contact if you can gray rock if you cannot do no contact at the start it is going to be really hard and you will have withdrawals it's it is like an addiction the trauma bond um weaning yourself off that drug weaning yourself off that trauma bond keep going it gets easier um do it now you have to go through the withdrawals there is no other way and it's far better to do it now than in 10 years time after the withdrawals you will reclaim your happiness your joy and your life again six shift your focus and you will go through periods of time where you are drawn into your past and they keep running around your mind you have to detach your thoughts i will add that um video in the description also um the pull of the trauma bond you might still need to work out some of your past set aside time to do so don't let it steal your present day set out moments to work through things and then to work through your past and then set out time to work on your future and set out time to enjoy the present um seven replace the void they leave behind with new activities new friends anything just get yourself busy and keep going so that you don't go back to them you don't look at the people <laughs> Well, unfortunately, many of us do. It takes seven attempts to get out of this sort of a relationship. We have to stop looking at those who broke us to help heal us because they will just not do it. They will just continue to hurt us. Sometimes it's not the person you miss. It is the routines you miss. And creating those new routines can help us recover. Um... Eight, when you are having down moments, put some lifting music on or call someone close to you. Yoga, exercise, meditation, watch something funny that makes you laugh. A sense of humour can really pick you up out of these things. And I know at the beginning people can read things that is funny. Um, to most people, we all we all have a different sense of humor so it is a case of whatever that sense of humor is to you and at the beginning we can read things and think no that's not funny that's toxic that's hurtful that's not funny and that's when we're still in the beginning stages once you come further further out once you can find the humorous side to it and abuse is not funny in any way shape or form it is not funny but things like when they're coming at you with their never-ending games, when we're stuck in the, why is this happening to me? Why are they doing this to me? What am I? When we get stuck in that woe is me, it keeps us trapped in that pain. When we laugh at the believable unbelievability of their actual toxic behaviour, when we recognise the games and see them come in and can laugh at the, oh, they're triangulating me now 
they're gaslighting me they're doing the silent treatment and enjoy the silent treatment when we can flip the script in our head um they flip the script but to destroy people we flip the script to heal and to leave them be so finding that sense of humor whatever that sense of humor is to you um I'll add in the description where you can find me on social media for more information. I shall also add in the description the courses, the online courses that I um have available and the videos, the video, the links to the videos that I've mentioned in this video. Thank you very much for listening and find three things to be grateful for today. Three things that you are grateful to have in your life and build on those and look for something that you would like to achieve look you don't have to know what you want out of life right now um one good way at looking at things that you enjoy for you is what do you enjoy what do you enjoy talking about with other people what do you enjoy what is your favorite topic of conversation and I know a lot of us can discuss narcissistic people. That doesn't mean it's your favourite topic of conversation. That means there might be things to work through. You also might find it fascinating. And um, I enjoy talking about it because I do find how the mind works fascinating. As many people do that talk about and try to help other people through this. Well, find find the things that you are passionate about, the things that you enjoy doing for you and start building on those because once you start working on doing the things you enjoy, you start to leave that past behind naturally and building on your future. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.